Welcome to You Brew Kombucha. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through how I prep all of my fruit for flavoring kombucha. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you've probably already seen my video on flavoring where I go over all the different ways that you can use fruit and herbs to flavor kombucha. But I've been getting a lot of requests from people who are curious about what I personally like to do when it comes to prepping those fruit flavorings. Do I prefer concentrates? Do I prefer frozen fruit? How do you handle fresh fruit? Do you use a blender? Do you use a juicer? So I figured I would just share the step-by-step -step process that I go through whenever I'm prepping my fruit to flavor kombucha for second fermentation. As you can see, there's a variety of different fruit here and they come in a lot of different states. So fresh, whole frozen fruit, frozen concentrates, there's frozen purees. There are a lot of different ways that you can flavor kombucha. Whenever I'm flavoring kombucha, I always prefer to go with fresh as much as possible. There are a couple of exceptions to that rule, usually for the t for types of fruit that aren't really commonly found fresh. Like for example, my favorite kombucha flavor and my favorite fruit to work with in a lot of different capacities is passion fruit. But the reality is in the United States, you can't really find fresh passion fruit at your normal grocery store year round. So I usually opt for a frozen passion fruit pulp or frozen passion fruit seeds when I'm flavoring my kombucha. I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through all the different ingredients that I have here and the pros and cons of, of using fresh versus frozen or concentrate and pureeing versus juicing and all that good stuff. One of the most common types of fruit to use when flavoring kombucha is citrus. And this one's actually a pretty easy one because you basically just have to juice the citrus. So I have some blood oranges here. Look at how pretty that is. And if you're juicing high volumes of citrus, I actually have an electric citrus juicer that I just press the citrus into and it makes it, it makes the process of juicing really all citrus super, super easy. But a lot of people have different ways of juicing citrus. You could just juice it by hand, obviously. Um, I like to get as much juice as possible out of my citrus. So I like using one of these types of citrus juicers. And another type of citrus juicer that I really like to use is this kind of citrus press that you just pop your citrus right in there. It squeezes all the juice out. I find that I have one that's that's for that's good for um, orange sized citrus, but it's a little big, so I will sometimes kind of double it up to press the juice out. And be sure to save all of the peels and the pith from citrus because you can actually use it to make a really delicious citrus syrup. Um, and I'm gonna make a whole other video dedicated to making syrups using fruit. So hold on to these, these don't have to go to waste. There is a lot of really great flavor in this. So definitely check out that other video to find out how we can get the most flavor out of these as well. So now I've juiced all of my citruses. You can see them here. And like I said, definitely be sure to save these citrus peels if you're interested in making a syrup out of them and watch that video if you're interested in making syrups. So I'm just gonna put these aside for now. I have a couple of ways that I like to handle non-citrus fresh fruit. And it really is just kind of dependent on, honestly, how lazy I am that particular day to break out my juicer. <laughs> but more so just how comfortable am I with the level of pulp that's gonna be in the kombucha that I'm drinking. And I actually have a pretty high tolerance for pulp. I don't really feel the need to overly strain kombucha. I don't really need my kombucha to be totally clear. I don't mind a little bit of sediment at the bottom of my bottle. And I know that everybody has different preferences with respect to sediment and pulp in their kombucha bottles. So you can always just adjust this based on your own taste preferences. But for me, 
Um, I like to use my blender for really as many of these fresh fruits as I can, just because it's just always on my countertop and it's a lot more easily accessible than my electric juicer. But there are certain fruits that lend themselves better to being juiced using an electric juicer. So if it's super pulpy or fibrous, that's when I like to use the juicer. But if it's something that doesn't actually have a ton of juice, things like berries, that I like to use the blender for so that I can get it into a nice puree. So I love to flavor kombucha with fresh raspberries, but if you just were to take a bunch of fresh raspberries and puree it in a blender, there isn't a lot of liquid in the raspberry, so it just kind of makes this thick paste that's not really easy to work with when it comes to flavoring kombucha. So what I like to do is, if I'm just flavoring with raspberries and no other liquid, then I will just add a little bit of prepared kombucha into the blender carafe. And just kind of eyeball it, but just so that there's enough liquid to get the mix going. Now, if you're planning on flavoring with other citrus fruits or combining this with another flavor, like if you're making a raspberry tangerine kombucha or a raspberry lemon kombucha, then you can just skip adding the kombucha to the blender carafe and just use whatever citrus juice you're planning on using. But adding a little bit of kombucha to the mix helps the blender go a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and puree this. And I have to say, I love this blender. I got it as a gift for my parents a few Christmases ago, and it is such a workhorse in my kitchen. It is fantastic at making purees, smoothies, cocktails. It's great for, I also make peanut butter with this blender. I love this blender so much. If you uh, want a link to this specific blender that I use, um, I will link it down in the description box below. I just love this blender so much. It's so great at making purees for kombucha because it really gets the liquid to such a smooth and liquidy state. Um, better than really any other blender that I've used in the past, which is great for flavoring with kombucha because you really want to make sure that it is as smooth as possible when you're mixing it with your brews. So that's how I prepare my berries and you can do the same thing for strawberries. I love brewing with ginger as a flavoring. This is one of those ingredients that's actually really, really fibrous. But if I'm brewing a big batch of kombucha and I don't feel like bringing down my massive juicer from the cabinet that it's in, then I will honestly just throw it in the blender along with other ingredients that I am using. So in this case, this will be a strawberry ginger flavoring. So I just like to use a vegetable peeler to get the peel off of the ginger. Just get as much of that peel off there. Cut off any fibrous bits. And then just go ahead and chop it. Before throwing it into the blender carafe. And I usually just eyeball, when I'm brewing kombucha at home, I don't really measure ingredients. I always just go by taste. I really love ginger as a flavoring agent and I, I like it when my kombucha tastes a little bit spicy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of this ginger. It'll make for a pretty potent flavoring and blend this up. looks great. And since we're dealing with fresh fruit, there are gonna be variations in sweetness levels. So I always just like to give it a quick taste to see if it's sweet enough. These strawberries are not terribly sweet. So what I'm going to do is just add sugar to the mix to just bump up that sweetness level a little bit. And then give it another blend. 
And you can do this with other flavorings as well. I usually find that raspberries aren't particularly sweet, but if you like kind of a more mellow hit of sweetness, you can obviously omit the sugar. What I will say though, is that since this is gonna continue to ferment, you do want a little bit of sugar content in the brew so that the yeasts and bacteria have something to feed off of and continue to ferment during second fermentation. That sugar is also going to help with carbonation. So if you are bottling and flavoring with the intent of producing kombucha that's fizzy, adding a little bit of sugar to the brew is also going to help that process along as well. All right, so that is our strawberry ginger puree. And then moving on to things that I like to juice. These are usually things that are a lot more fibrous, like I mentioned. So if I don't really want a ton of pulp in the puree, or if it's just something that's really juicy but fibrous, that's when I like to break out the juicer. So good examples of this would be pineapple, apples, pears, uh, ginger. Actually, I prefer to use the juicer for ginger, but the truth of it is that I use ginger so frequently and with uh, different berries that I tend to puree in the blender anyhow that I usually just use the blender. But ideally, if I have the juicer out, I love using the juicer for ginger because it really, like you don't even have to peel it. Um, you can just chop it up, throw it in the juicer and it completely extracts all of the pulp from it. So all you get is pure ginger juice. Um, and then same goes for really any, any fruit that you throw in there. Apples are fantastic in the juicer and make for a great flavoring for kombucha because as it acidifies and ferments, it creates this almost cider-like flavor. And in the fall, I love making an apple cinnamon flavored kombucha. So you can just throw the apples in here. There's a lot of foam there, but if you've never had freshly juiced apples, it is such a treat. This is actually, you'll see this kind of settle as time goes on and it turns into the most beautiful pinkish color um, before oxidation comes in and actually turns it brown. So most apple juice that you see at the grocery store is that golden color because it's, it's oxidized as the apple juice has been exposed to oxygen over time. But before it gets to that state, it looks like this and it's absolutely beautiful. And then for ginger, whenever I throw that into the juicer, I basically just like to chop off any kind of dried, too fibrous bits. The juicer does most of the work with taking the skin off and um, all those fibrous bits, but since we're gonna be drinking and consuming this juice, I just go ahead and like remove all of the pulpy bits that I don't really wanna eat. So just toss that in there. So really potent, really potent ginger juice. And lastly, I love putting pineapple through the juicer. This one is a little uh, less ripe than I'd like, but it was the best that my grocery store had for me. Uh, when, when judging a pineapple for ripeness, um, I always like to look at the color. Um, you want something that's a little bit more golden than this. This is pretty on the green side, but another good way to test if it's sweet or ready to eat is by smelling the base of it. If you can get a distinct sweet pineapple aroma from the base, that usually means you're in store for a good pineapple. And this actually does have a pretty good aroma, so I feel good about slicing into it. I'm actually gonna grab a bowl to save these, the pineapple peel, because I'm going to actually use that peel to make another ferment called tapache. So if you're interested in learning about how to make tapache, uh, stay tuned for that video, or if it's already out, I'll go ahead and link it down in the description box below. But tapache is another natural fruit ferment that 
uses only pineapple and sugar and the naturally occurring yeasts and bacteria that live on the fruit itself to go through a fermentation process. It makes for a really delicious drink. So I am gonna use as much of this pineapple as I can. And I'm not being super, super precise about uh, not chopping off as much of the actual pineapple fruit as I can, only because that added fruit um, when I make tapache is just gonna make the tapache taste better. So I am not overly concerned about being too precise about that. And whenever you're prepping fresh pineapple, you wanna take this core out. I happen to be saving it to make tapache, but um, most people don't know this, but you can actually make a pineapple syrup using this core. If you just wanna chop it up into kind of one-ish inch chunks and uh, put it in a bowl with some either brown sugar or regular white cane granulated sugar, mix it up and just let it sit there for a few hours. You'll be surprised by how much liquid actually comes out of this really fibrous pineapple core. And you can use that syrup for flavoring kombucha. You can use that syrup for flavoring cocktails, all sorts of really fantastic applications from this fruit waste byproduct that most people usually ignore. But in my case, I'm actually gonna use it for tapache, so that is not going to waste. I'm just gonna keep chopping these pineapples into spears that'll fit through my juicer. So I'm gonna save this for tapache. All right, now we're gonna juice our pineapple. your container doesn't overflow as you're juicing. All right. freshly juiced pineapple that's fantastic for using with kombucha. There are a few different categories of frozen fruit that I like to use for brewing kombucha. One is just frozen whole fruit, so frozen berries, frozen mango chunks. This you can prepare very similarly to how I prepared the fresh berries earlier. So the fresh strawberries and fresh raspberries, I just threw them into the blender, pureed them up until it was really, really fine. And then if needed, you can adjust for flavor. If the berries aren't super sweet, you can just add a little bit more sugar if that's something that you're interested in doing. This is fantastic for just like pureeing in the blender and it's great because you can just keep a stash of it in the freezer and not always have to have fresh berries around. I also really like to use um, frozen concentrates when flavoring my kombucha. So this is mango nectar and calamansi juice concentrate that I purchased from Filipino or Asian markets. These are fantastic for flavoring kombucha. Because these are concentrates, the flavor is pretty potent. So I usually just use about one of these containers per gallon batch that I am flavoring. But again, because taste is so subjective and some people like their kombucha to be more potent tasting and some people like the fruit to sort of take a back seat, you can really just adjust the amounts of flavorings you use based on your own personal preferences. But the last category of frozen uh, fruit that I like to use for kombucha are these flat frozen packets of juice or puree. I get these from my local Mexican grocery store and they have a bunch of different flavors as well. So these are, this is frozen blackberries, frozen mango, frozen passion fruit. Since passion fruit is actually my favorite of all time flavor of kombucha, if you follow me on Instagram, more often than not, I'm probably posting about a flavor that has 
passion fruit in it in some capacity. I am gonna do a whole separate video dedicated to different ways to flavor with passion fruit, whether it's fresh passion fruit, frozen passion fruit, passion fruit puree or passion fruit seeds. So if you're curious about passion fruit and how I get my kombucha to taste like true authentic passion fruit, definitely watch that video. But at a high level, what I like to do with these kind of frozen purees and frozen packets of fruit flavoring is I like to defrost them. I take it out of the plastic bag and put it in a kind of microwave safe container. If you're in a hurry, you can just nuke it, microwave it for a couple of minutes until it's liquefied. And then some of these already come sweetened. Some of them don't come sweetened. Passion fruit usually doesn't come sweetened, which I think is great because you can really adjust the sweetness level based on your own preferences. Passion fruit is a very sour fruit. It's really tart. And so you do have to add a little bit of sugar to adjust for that. And again, the sugar also helps speed up and accelerate fermentation and produce carbonation. So it, it, it does double duty of one, making it taste better and two, actually helping with fermentation. But for purees that are already pretty sweet, all you have to do is just defrost it get it to a place where it's liquefied and easily mixable into your kombucha, and then use it as, uh, as you would any normal fruit puree or fruit juice. And then the last category of fruit flavoring that I like to use is just store-bought juices. Generally, I tend to prefer store-bought juices that are kept in the refrigerator section. If it's shelf stable or not kept in the refrigerator section, it's often pasteurized. And sometimes they add additional ingredients as preservatives to basically help it stay shelf stable for longer. And I find that that generally produces flavors and fermentation that are not ideal. So it sometimes tastes pretty musty. Sometimes it, it makes the kombucha more difficult to carbonate. Of course, this varies from brand to brand. Um, and if you find a store-bought shelf-stable juice that happens to work for your kombucha, that's fantastic. Generally, as a preference, I prefer the ones that are refrigerated because they have le fewer ingredients, they're less processed. But again, every company and every brand handles it very differently. So, um, I just use it as an opportunity to kind of experiment and play around with different brands and different types of juices that I'm, I'm curious about trying out. But pretty consistently, this brand of pomegranate juice has produced really great tasting, bubbly, consistent kombucha for me. Um, I love using it as a mixer for passion fruit or for different citruses. And it's another great, quick and easy option to use as a flavoring for your kombucha. You can also use herbs and flowers to flavor your kombucha, but since I handle those a little bit differently than how I handle fruit, I'm gonna film a whole separate video dedicated to that. So if you're curious about using herbs or flowers to flavor your second fermentation, go ahead and check that video out. But as you can see, there are a whole variety of different ways that you can flavor your kombucha during the second fermentation phase. And if you're curious about how I brew my kombucha, definitely check out the videos uh, linked in the description box below for the full step-by-step. -step. As a quick reminder, I always recommend using flavorings during the second fermentation part of brewing kombucha and not the first fermentation part because you never want to have fruits or flavorings come into contact with your SCOBY or kind of your, your, your starter culture because over time, different flavorings can actually degrade and make the SCOBY less healthy. Less healthy doesn't mean that it's gonna result in a product that's bad for you. It just means that it might result in kombucha that doesn't taste as good or doesn't carbonate as well. And so the reason why I like to flavor during the second fermentation part of kombucha brewing is because at that point, the starter tea and the kombucha is already kind of reserved and set aside. And the only um, thing that you're gonna be doing with the flavored kombucha is drink it. So at that point, it's totally fine to use flavors in the kombucha because you're basically not planning on using that flavored kombucha to make a future batch of kombucha. So I hope this has inspired you to try out a few different um, flavor combinations with your kombucha. If you're curious about how I um, mix and match these flavors, definitely watch my complete guide to first and second fermentation um, since I'm gonna be playing around with these different purees and juices and, and show you how I like to mix and match flavors when I flavor my kombucha. But comment down below, let me know what your favorite flavor combinations are. And as always, you can find more information at my website, youbrewkombucha.com. Happy brewing. Thank <laughs> you.